Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And today I'm going to be drawing humanized designs of iconic villains, starting with the character of Death from the recent Puss in Boots movie. Now, I absolutely loved this movie and I loved the character design of Death. He's scary, um, he's super imposing, and every time he's in a scene, you can't help but notice him and pay full attention to him, and I think that that's absolutely fantastic. So, um, I really wanted to try giving him a human design because in the uh, story Puss in Boots, he is shown as a giant wolf. Um, now, uh, he is a really striking character. He has very broad shoulders and sort of tapers down to his feet, um, and he has these sickles that he carries, uh, one in each hand, uh, and it gives him quite a uh, shocking and noticeable silhouette every time he appears. Um, I wanted to copy this pose directly off of a pose that you see him in, where he has both his arms crossed over his chest with the sickles brought up to the sides of his face. Um, it's a bit of a tricky pose. I actually had to take some pictures of myself in this exact angle to try to figure out how it would work underneath there, but um, I think I got it okay. Uh, now, he his age was the first thing that I wasn't exactly sure about. He definitely doesn't read as like an old father time type, which sometimes death is portrayed as, um, but I also didn't think he seemed like a teenager or anything, just judge, judging by his voice, so I tried to go towards adult. Um, he's very agile and very fast in the movie, so I definitely didn't want him to seem too old. Um, and I wanted to give him sort of like a feral energy, even though he is relatively calm at a lot of points in the movie. Um, I wanted to give him sort of a longer wolf cut to his hair, um, and also have that little bit of madness in his eyes and in his big fangy smile. Even though he is a humanized design, uh, I can't help myself but give him some shark teeth. It's one of my favorite character design things ever, um, so yeah, I really couldn't resist. I copied the color palette directly off of the source material just because I felt like that would be more satisfying at the end. Um, so he has an incredibly cool color palette generally. Um, he has sort of like a slate gray kind of color and then he has these two pops of warmth in his blood red eyes. Um, now they utilize this uh, point in his character design quite a bit throughout the movie which makes a lot of sense I think. Um, and uh, he really is quite quite terrifying. The only other color on him other than the red of his eyes and the sort of slate tones of the rest of him are the uh, gauntlets and his pants which are sort of like a brown. I tried to just make sure those weren't drawing too much attention either because it really is all about his eyes. Um, and he has these sort of like white cheeks um, on the side of his face so I put that into his hair in like little panels. I also thought about giving him a tattoo of a cat skull that says remember death um, above it in Latin, but I ended up removing that because I felt like it was getting just a little bit too distracting, even though I do think he'd look very cool with tattoos. Um, and then there you have it. This is my humanized version. I really love this character, so I hope you guys like my uh, sort of reimagining of him. Next up, I wanted to go a little more old school, and that is in the villain Shere Khan from The Jungle Book. Um, now, Jungle Book is really an amazing um, feat of hand-drawn animation. Like Sometimes you can even see as the animals move, you can see the little pencil lines, and I feel like it reminds you that someone was doing this all by hand, and I think that's so amazing. And uh, the fluid, scary movement of this gentleman villain, Shere Khan, is probably one of the high points. Um, Jungle Book, obviously, like a lot of old Disney movies, is has some <laughs> some problematic elements, but I think if you're an animator, you can still really appreciate um, the look of the thing. And uh, I think that Shere Khan is a fantastic villain. He's this sort of like debonair, um, very calm, very composed, but um, incredibly threatening character. Um, and I think that his design is really cool as well. So um, unlike Death, uh, Shere Khan I definitely read as older. Um, he has been around um, and he is uh, someone who has like he, he has this massive presence about him so I wanted to draw him as a um, older bigger guy uh, just like a really broad-shouldered um, kind of like hulking sort of person but with this very calm very debonair sort of attitude um, and I think that this little image of Shere Khan like checking his claws like he's just sort of looking at his nails very casually um, as he interrogates the characters of the movie about the whereabouts 
of Mowgli. Um, I think that this, this really captures his whole uh, attitude and his whole presence in the film. Um, so I kept the claws. This is probably the least like human aspect of him. I tried to keep everything else like relatively possible and, and human. Um, and I also was sticking with all the color palettes, of course. Like so, you know, death death stays blue. Uh, Shere Khan will remain like this sort of orangey rust color. Um, and I knew that uh, I wanted to give him sort of like an open. Uh, suit kind of look. Um, I wanted him to uh, sort of have that like big white patch in the front and I thought that would be easy enough to do with menswear. I also wanted to give him a little accent of fur because Shere Khan is a carnivore and has no problem killing other animals as well as um, the humans that he is he's worried about. Um, so I wanted to sort of show that on him and um, Trying to incorporate the like stripes of him wasn't too bad. I wanted to give him some scars across his face because also you do get, despite the fact that he has this like sort of gentleman attitude, you get the sense that he's like been through some stuff and he's he's won some fights in his past. So I thought that'd be a good way to show his stripes. Um, and uh, I also did some pinstriping on his suit, and I tried to show a little bit of his musculature um, underneath the the suit as well, just because again, yeah, like I want him to be sort of like this massive, um, very strong character, and having that sort of offset with his personality, which is so so um, reserved. Um, <laughs> uh, I gave him a white beard, which I think is probably a little strange um but i had to try it because he does seem to have one as in his tiger form you know um all around his mouth it's like the brightest part of him um so i thought it would be interesting i mean it is true that like sometimes men um their beard goes white before their hair um so that's my argument for why that's even possible but here he is the the debonair um, monster of the jungle shere khan Next, I could not help myself but go back to Odd Taxi. Um, this is an anime that I absolutely loved and considered extremely underrated, and I'm going to be drawing Hajime. Um, now, for those of you who've watched Odd Taxi to completion, um, like, no spoilers, but I'm sure you understand that this is a little bit different than the other ones, but still I wanted to take my own crack at humanizing him, and um, Hajime is an interesting antagonist. Um, he's sort of uh, being afflicted by a, a type of madness, um, and the the scenario that leads him to this point um, is kind of funny and kind of extremely sad, um, and I just think his character design is absolutely fantastic. Um, I think that the fact that Odd Taxi can have such like a soft, bubbly, cartoony style and still carry such a dramatic story um, with all these animal characters is really impressive and um, I've been kind of obsessed with the scenes with Hajime uh, ever since I first watched this anime. Um, so Hajime at one point in the show um, is walking around with a, a bloodstained hoodie, a gun, and a, a skull mask. Um, now in Odd Taxi he is like an otter, I believe, um, and so uh, he has like these little markings around his eyes. I wanted to sort of incorporate that in a natural kind of way and just make him have like some, some darkness and redness around his eyes, which makes sense because he's been uh, not sleeping um, and just is generally not doing very well. Um, and uh, he also wears this like orange beanie alongside this uh, blue hoodie and then just like normal khaki pants. Um, he has quite a swift uh, downturn in his life and uh, so he goes from someone who's relatively like uh, put together to someone who's quite disheveled. Um, and I wanted to sort of like incorporate that. Um, I slightly altered the mask um, to make it more like quote unquote human. He seems to have an animal skull mask in the show. Um, and so I'm thinking that pushing it a little more human-like makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, uh, I decided to keep the cat ears on his or the animal ears on his hoodie just because I, I like them. <laughs> um, and uh, really like getting more out of his face and everything I think is, would be the real benefit of, of him being shown as human in the show. Um, but uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's probably one of the most interesting characters who shows up so late in the series. Odd Taxi is um, it's basically a uh, murder mystery kind of, it's a crime drama. Um, 
from the perspective of this older taxi cab driver who just happens to have the misfortune of having some really interesting people crawling into his cab and it causes a lot of problems for him. He's getting harassed by the police for his dash cam footage and um, being <laughs> attacked by, uh, you know, gangsters. And it's, it's, it's a super great, um, super short anime that I highly recommend. But yeah, this, this whole side um, issue with Hajime is, uh, is, is really something and so I really wanted to draw him so of course I'm adding him in here even though this is probably not as uh, well known as uh, Jungle Book or uh, even Puss in Boots for sure. Um, I wanted to use really dramatic lighting here, uh, cell shading, I didn't want to do a lot of blending just uh, for the, the starkness and the drama of the situation. Um, and he definitely reads younger than both of the previous ones so I tried to make him look a little more fresh faced um, even in his hour of uh, despair. <laughs> So here are all my humanized designs of these iconic villains. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know who your favorite villain is in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you to all of my patrons, including Ventali, Sniper, JP25, Lucy Amajiki, Heartless Doll, Finn Must Die, Aries Chaos, Live Live, Salty Jackrabbit, New Smoke, Raven's Crow, Zocelot, T Home Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Gender Was Stolen, K Moon Milk, Kadaria, Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Subaki, Michael Lavali, Cutie Pie, Rune Rain Crow, Ice Cream Pal, Kola, JJ Jade, and of course, Blah 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 Blah.